Okay, well, hello everyone. All right, so, so the next program in chapter six is dice game. All right, so write a program that uses the die class that was presented in this chapter to play a simple dice game between the computer and the user. The program should create two instances of the, of the die class, each a six-sided die. One die object is the computer's die, and the other die object is the user's die. The, project, uh, the program should have a loop that iterates 10 times. Each time the loop iterates, it should roll both dice. The dice with the highest value wins. In case of a tie, there is no winner for that particular roll of the dice. As the loop iterates, the program should keep count of the number of times the computer wins and the number of times that the user wins. After the loop performs all, the, all its iterations, the program should display who, won, who was the grand winner, the computer or the user. All right, so, um, so in the previous program, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it was a previous program. But I think two programs before the game, the program called the game of twenty one. We created a die class, right? So we're going to be using that class for this one. So before I start, I'm going to open the folder where I keep all the Java files. Oh, that's different. That's the Learn Java series that I just started. The um, course that I just started. All right. So programming challenges in chapter 6, a game of 21, and it has a die class here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of the die class, uh, just the die class. And then I'll paste it. Well, before I paste it, I need to uh, make a folder for the new program that we just started. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this, although I have no code, no code uh, except comments in there. So I'm going to, in chapter 6, make a new, a new folder for dice game. And then and then save this as dice.java, which means I need to uh, create my class with the same name um, as my file name, as this file name. So I'm going to save this as um, dice. Okay. If you don't add the, if you don't add the um, extension, um, the .java extension, that Java is going to be nice enough to add it for you. If if, um, if if you also go ahead and type in .java, it's the same thing. All right. So I'm going to save this as dice.java, and then I will open that folder. In chapter six, and then save, save the class here, die.java. Okay, so I'm just going to open it just so we can we can refer to it. If you wanted to create this class, just refer to the a game of twenty one program, and then you, um, we created it from scratch there, so you can you can look at it. Or I can have it open here. You can pause the screen, and then also um, rep reproduce it. So die. And this is a die class. It's a real. It's a simple class. It has two fields: number of sides and die value, All right? And it has a method to roll the dice. And anytime you roll the dice, it generates a random number, and then it sets the the particular die object's value. To get, uh, it it has one accessor, which is get die value, which returns the the die value of that current um, die, and then this is the constructor to to create an object from this class. All right, so. We'll read the question and then we'll answer this question based on wh what it says. So let's first of all let's go ahead and create the class, right? So public public class. I'm going to call this dice game. And then I'll go ahead and create the main method. Okay, so let's see the first thing we have to do. Write a program that uses a die class. Okay, we have the die the die class here that was presented in this chapter to play a simple dice game between the computer and the, uh, and the user. The program should create two instances of the die class. All right, so two instances of the die class, each a six-sided die. So we know that we are going to create two objects, two die objects. Right. So let's do that. So I'm going to create two two die ob ob objects. I'm going, to, I'm going to use the name of the class die and then the name of the object. So the first one I'm going to call die. Well, well, it said that. Uh, the program should um, the program should create two instances of the die class. Okay, one die object is the computer's die, and uh, and the other die object is the user's die. <coughs> so I'm going to call this die user die. Okay, well, and I'm going to call the other one computer uh, computer die. Now, when you create or when you try to define a class type variable like this, which is user die, when you try to do that, Java is well. First of all, let's this is similar to trying to create um, an object like 
of sorry, a, rev a regular variable like this. Let's say int number. Oops, sorry, my typing is bad. All right, so when you do this, Java knows you're trying to create an integer called number. This is the type and this is the name of the variable. Now, when you try to do this, Java is going to think, okay, you're trying to create a variable, right? But it's going to realize that this die is not um, a primitive data type. It's not one of the primitive data types. It's not an int. It's not a double. It's not a, it's not a character. So it's going to try to look in that folder to see if there's any die class. Or, it's going, if you, or if you type in a path to a, a class, it's going to try to look in that path to see if that class exists. Now, now if it looks in the folder or it finds the or looks in the path to see if the class exists and it finds a die class, then it's going to realize and it's going to know that okay, you're trying to create an object, a die object. So it's going to go ahead and and reserve this user die class die variable to hold a, um, a die object. All right. So now that's all we've done. User die is just going to be a variable that's going to reference a die object. And then once it's once we have that variable, we can go ahead and create a new a new die in memory. And over here in the die class, the constructor accepts number of sites, the number of sites of the die. And then in the question it said, the program should create two instances of the die class, each a six-sided die. So each of them ha has six sites, right? So in this case, I'm going to enter six for the number of sites for uh, user die. All right. Or you can create a final double, or sorry, a final int and store that var value, since that value won't really change. But this also works. All right. Now this equal sign is going to return the reference uh, address, or basically it's, it's going to sorry it's going to return the memory address of this particular die object, and then this user die class type variable or reference variable will reference that particular object. All right, let's let's go ahead and do the same thing for um, just you know, add some space here. Let's go ahead and add just create another die object for the computer. So this time I'm going to call it com computer die. It's going to be the same thing: new die in memory with six sides. Okay, so now we've done that. We've done we've done that. We are here. The program should have a loop that iterates ten times. So let's let's focus on that. Let's go ahead and create a loop that iterates ten times. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and use a for loop. Okay. So let's see. Um, let's create a target variable. Let's start. I'm going to call it. Let's see. Um, int current um, role, I guess. Current role. Okay. So the Number of times, okay. So, so basically, the, the loop should sh the program should have a loop that iterates ten times. Each time the loop iterates, it should roll both dice. So basically, each iteration of this loop is going to represent one one roll, right? Or, or one roll. So that's why I'm calling this current roll because this current roll is uh, current roll variable is going to keep track of the current roll, whether it's the second roll, the third roll, or the fourth roll. It's going to start from one though, so I'm going to initialize this current roll to one, and then. When this loop starts, we want to check to see if current row is less than or equal to 10. And if it's less than or equal to 10, do what's in the loop, okay? And before, you, before the loop iterates for the, again, okay, and check to see if current row is less than or equal to 10, let's add 1 to current row. All right, so... Basically, well, basically, what what is happening is this loop is going to start current row with with a number one, and it's going to check if current row is less than or equal to ten. Yes, current row will be less than or equal to ten because it starts at one, and if it's true, if if it's less than or equal to ten, it's going to go ahead and do what's in the loop, and then before it comes back up to to iterate again and check to see if current current row is less than or equal to ten, it's going to add uh, one to current row. So current row is going to be two the second time around, and it's going to check to see if current row is less than or equal to ten. Two will be less than or equal to ten. It's going to do what's in the loop, and before it comes back up to check to see if current roll is less than or equal to 10, it's going to add 1 to current roll. So basically, this loop is starting from 1, making sure that that, that number, that current roll is less than or equal to 10. And then, you know, basically, it, it keeps doing that until, until current roll is not, not um, less than or equal to 10. So as if current roll hit, hits 11, this, this, this loop stops. Right? Anything 10 uh, or below, okay? Starting from one, anything, t anything ten or below, you know, it, it keeps iterating. Okay, uh, it, um, whatever is in the block of the loop is going to run. All right, so we've done that. Let's see. Each time the loop iterates, it should roll both dice. It should roll both both dice. 
So let's go ahead and do that. We have the object, right? So we can go ahead and enroll it. We have a role method in the class, which over here, which is uh, over here. And then when it rolls, it's going to generate a random number and then assign the value to the, the die value, the die value of that particular object. So the reason why it's doing this is because, well, we, we went over this in the in the game of 21 program, but it's generating a random number this way. So it's so number of so as you know, the types in six for number of sites as we've done, right? Six six for number of sites. So when you when you I'm going to go ahead and remove this for a second, plus one for a second. When you call the random dot next int and you type in the number of sites, so basically random dot next int six, right? Number of sites is six. It it generates a range. Sorry, so it so yeah, it generates a range basically from zero to six. Zero to six, right? So basically, it's going to go ahead and create a random integer in the range of zero, 0 to 6. Now, we don't want that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake here. 0 to 5. I'm sorry. I, I, was, I was thinking of something. I was thinking of adding one already. All right. So forget forget everything I said about you know in the, in the last 5 seconds or 7 seconds. All right. When you call the random.nextInt method that, like this, and you pass in a number of sites, assuming, assuming it's 6, right? So random.nextInt 6. It's going to go ahead and create a range in a range, uh, range in the... Oh, yeah, a range of 0 to 6, like that. So I, I said it again. <laughs> a range of 0 to 5. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, so when you type in 6 here, you create, you're creating a range of 0 to 5. Okay, it, it doesn't include the last number you type. It doesn't include the upper limit. So if I, if I type in uh, random.nextInt, and I type in here, say, let's say, 7, right? It's going to go, go ahead and give me a range of 0 to 6 now. Okay, if I type in a range, uh, oh, sorry, type in random the next int, let's say 10, it's going to give me a range of 0 to 9. It doesn't include the last number you type in. The last number is your upper limit, but it's not included. So, assuming someone types in 6, which is going to give us a range of 0 to 5, we don't want, we don't want that. Um, because a die, if it's six sides, then we, had, we are talking about the, the number one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? That we don't want from zero to five. Zero is not even on the die. It won't be on the die. We want, we want a, range, a range from one to six, right? So I'm going to undo this for a second. So the, the way we do this, the way we shift this, we are, shifting, we are shifting this range one level up, right? So zero goes up one. And five goes up one. The way we do that is by adding plus one outside the parentheses. So you are saying this range of zero to five. Go ahead and shift it one level up, meaning shift shift the range one level up. Shift the zero to one and then five to six. So the zero is going to go to one, and then five is going to go to six. So basically, this random the next end six plus one is going to go ahead and create a range of one to six. In other words, it's just going to generate a random number from one to six, and that's what we want because. 1 to 6, any of those numbers is going to be on the die. And that's why we do, we've done that. All right, so that was just to explain why this happened. But we exp uh, I talked about this in the Game of 21 program. All right, so we have a row method. That's what it's going to do. It's going to get the die value of that particular object. All right, so let's just save this. All right, in over here, in the loop, we're supposed to roll both dice. It, it says over here, the die... Um, each time the loop iterates, it should roll both dice. So let's go ahead and roll them. So user die dot roll. And then computer die dot roll. So we've done that. We've, we've, we've rolled both dice. 